Hello friends, welcome to ITK Fun Day, your own channel where we make IT interesting for everyone. And in this video, we'll cover one of the most requested topics from you guys uh, in the field of data and that is Master Data Management or MDM. So we'll cover three different uh, topics today. Uh, firstly, we'll start with basically what is master data management. Then uh, we'll, we'll understand it through a real life example, my story, what happened with me and how I can correlate that with uh, what could have happened because of the lack of master data management. And lastly, we'll understand a basic architecture and some products of MDM. So I hope this will be an exciting session for everyone. So without further ado, let's get started. Thank you friends, if you're new to ITK Funday channel, we make IT interesting for everyone, be it IT or non-IT. We discuss all the latest tools and technologies, products, productivity hacks and career tips on this channel. So if you're new and if you like the content, do consider subscribing. So friends, even before we understand uh, the definition of master data management, let's understand it through uh, an example, a transaction. So suppose customer A, uh, you know, bought product X at a store S1 on 1st of January uh, 2022 at 18 BST for 20 pounds, which converts into uh, $26. Now in this whole statement, we can see three different types of data. There is the data like customer, product, store. This data is called as enterprise data because this data rarely changes, right? Uh, you have to maintain this data. But then apart from that, there is some other kind of data will, will, which will continue to change, right? So suppose this particular data, the time of purchase. Now this customer can come back again and buy something else, right? So this is one kind of data. And then obviously uh, there is another which is this price. This can also keep changing. Maybe the product becomes costlier. It could be 25 pound, 50 pound. And then it gets converted into US dollar. So there is some sort of a conversion which is happening uh, uh, between uh, British pounds and US dollars. So customer, product, store, all these are examples of your master data. What you see here is a very good example of your transactional data. And then your unit price or uh, the price of your product is getting converted into this US dollar. So suppose if there is this reference table, uh, which is, uh, you know, updated in real time with the latest uh, conversion rates of USD and GBP. So this particular reference table, uh, you know, is an example of your reference data. So friends, now as we have a high level understanding of what is master data, what is transactional data, what is reference data. Now uh, let's understand the standard definition of master data management. So if we go by the standard definition, master data management is a technology enabled discipline under data management area or umbrella where business and IT both come together to maintain and ensure that all your enterprise data is consistently maintained at one common place. So it will have all the common definitions, policies, controls, uh, data quality, everything will be maintained at a one common place. And that place would be called as your master data management. So friends, to understand what happens if you don't have a proper MDM, I'll share a personal incident. So one day I got a call from a marketing executive uh, from, uh, from a bank you can take it as quiz bank and uh, the lady called me uh, and she offered me to you know to apply for a new credit card uh, which was offered by the bank but then i was surprised that why this call is coming to me because i already had that particular credit card and when i informed that to the marketing exec uh, she was little surprised because she was not aware of it so she had to hung up the call because she had no clue how to proceed further with this lead because i was already a customer so what i think might have happened is that there it could be a disconnect between the marketing department and the customer service department as far as the customer is concerned because if i am already having the credit card my details would have been there somewhere entered in the customer uh, service database, right? But it could be that the name with which I am recorded maybe could be Anshul T. 
वेर इन शी वॉज रिफरिंग टू मी एज मिस्टर तिवारी सो मे बी शी गॉट दिस फ्रॉम समवेयर एल्स एंड शी हैड नो आइडिया हाउ टू लुक अप दिस पर्टिकुलर कस्टमर जस्ट बेस्ड ऑन द नेम और सम अदर एट्रीब्यूट लाइक ई मेल एड्रेस और मोबाइल नंबर इन देयर कस्टमर सर्विस डेटा बेस so this is where you know master data management would be very handy because instead of having and maintaining separate data silos if you would had a common or a central place where you would have managed your customer entity somewhere in the center so what would have happened the marketing team and the customer service team uh, both the department could refer to this customer data and also uh, this would have enabled this particular marketing exec to know that i am an existing customer so instead of calling and offering me a new credit card she could have changed his narrative and tried to upsell uh, this particular lead with an increase on the credit card limit or she could have also tried cross selling me with a new credit card offer or something like that so you can understand the business impact if you do not have the data in a central location and uni uh, and uniformly defined across your enterprise systems these kind of scenarios happens as we understood that master data management sit at the center uh, it is kind of a hub architecture so at the center you will have your mdm hub where you will store all your master data and then in this this particular hub will communicate between all the different business functions so for example sales and marketing bi analytics and reporting finance procurement and all the different areas uh, business process management for example and this particular master data management hub would be responsible to maintain and continuously update the master data so what it will do it will continuously collect the data from all these different systems and also publish the data uh, regularly to these different systems so that whenever these systems are communicating to further downstream systems they are in sync with this particular master data so these master data could have hierarchies also for example location so now in location you can have state city district like that right so all that kind of hierarchy would be maintained here we also maintain business rules in master uh, data hub business rules are the set of definitions and processes which defines a transaction so suppose a customer a buys a product x at a at a store b something like that okay all that business process needs to be defined in order to understand how this master data has to be maintained that's why uh, here i have mentioned that mdm by its very nature should never be it owned it can support mdm from technology perspective but mdm should always be owned by the business because business exactly know how they need to run a certain business process and then the reference data obviously the reference data would also be maintained uh, to have that look up with uh, different external data which will add context to your master data and that's why we call this as the golden copy so whatever you have here is the single source of truth uh, stored at a central location now what are some features of mdm so very importantly uh, let's understand some basic mdm examples like entities customer employee product vendor location parts all these kind of information is considered as your master data now it will vary uh, from industry to industry but yeah these are some generic master data example entities now some features of mdm so as i said it has to be business owned secondly it has to be backed up by strong data governance because we are talking about maintaining something with high quality high standard and some stringent business processes and all of this cannot happen if you do not have a strong data governance framework and that's why master data management uh, falls under the purview of your overall data governance system so that has to be in place then what are some business drivers so basically there are five different drivers five different business drivers which uh drives this need for mdm because what if the cxos of your company comes and says okay why you want to spend your money into implementing something uh, as a master data management right so these are the business driver first of all customer experience as i uh, i shared my example you know that was a good you know good example that my experience was not very good why because uh, you know because of that lack of master data management secondly analytics obviously when you are doing uh, reporting when you are creating reports your data could not be very correct if you are not managing master data management 
so analytics is one of the business drivers or reporting governance and compliance so now more and more data is going on the cloud suppose if you want to run a gdpr assessment that what kind of pii data you are sharing or what kind of PII data is there on the cloud, how you will do it. If you have the master data management system, then it will be very, very easy and uh, efficient. MA stands for merger and acquisition. So for example, Facebook bought uh, Instagram uh, some years back and also WhatsApp. So all these three different companies might have come together and then if, if you need to have a successful merger and acquisition, then you need to have master data management because there would be similar entities having different definitions in all these different companies, right? And obviously, uh, last but not the least, operational efficiency. So operational efficiency means improving your operational performance. In my case, uh, I was a very good customer uh, to have a upsell or a cross sell to different maybe credit cards or maybe increasing my credit card limit. But that particular uh, goal was not achieved because of lack of MDM. So operational efficiency is increased when you have MDM, you can meet your goals, you can meet your SLAs and you can uh, improve overall business efficiency as well. Now we have covered a lot of things around MDM, but now let's understand some uh, products in the market uh, which helps us implement MDM. So friends, these are, uh, these are four products which I uh, know uh, implements MDM uh, technology wise. But as I said uh, previously, MDM is not only about tools and technologies, it's mostly about your business processes. But still, you will need some technology or a product to implement it. So Atacama is a very renowned product to implement all your data quality, data governance and MDM solution. IBM, Infosphere MDM, again a very good product. Informatica has always been an exceptional ETL product and it has a product called as Informatica Multi-Domain MDM. And last but not the least, SAP ERP has a specific product, uh, Master Data Go Governance with SAP S4 HANA. It is a cloud-based product offering from SAP side. To recap, now we have covered what is MDM, what is master data, what is reference data, what is transactional data. We learned from my personal experience how MDM could affect your business process. And then we understood in totality how MDM architecture works, what are some master data examples, and what are some uh, salient features which should be there in MDM and five different business drivers which can drive the need for MDM in a particular enterprise. So friends, this brings us to the end of this video and I hope you learned something about MDM. If you did, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you exactly know when I upload my next video. So until next time guys, please keep learning, keep sharing all your knowledge with others and yes, keep hustling. Bye for now.